Summer is finally here, and none of us are prepared. By day, you're working from home with OSRS bopping on the second monitor, and by night, you're running Tears of the Kingdom or D4 with an aircon blasting in the background. With all our New Year's resolutions firmly buried, who has time to worry about hitting the gym or getting our diets in check? You see, that's what I want to go over today. I was really tired of being tired all the time and dedicated the past year or so towards improving my physical health. At this point, I found a really nice middle ground where I can enjoy playing games and working at my desk while making improvements to my strength and conditioning, getting excellent sleep, and still enjoying ice cream and burritos every now and then. I've spent countless hours watching videos and reading studies on the best practices for maintaining a healthy life, and I want to share all the gyms I currently live by. It's incredibly important to establish that I am not a dietitian, nor am I trained in any sort of physical education. Everything I do is a part of a learning process that constantly changes, so don't take any of this advice as gospel. This is all coming from a type A endomorph that mainly wanted to focus on getting lean and strong, so I can only really speak from that perspective. I just find with the current state of fitness content you tend to run into a ton of grifters trying to complicate what is essentially the oldest trick in the book. At best they're trying to nab your wallet, and at worst they're gonna put you down a dangerous path of misinformation. So, no money needed, no sketchy websites or obvious product placement, I just want to offer what got me over the hump of getting started while still sticking to a comfortable schedule. And of course, if you have any serious health conditions or physical needs, don't listen to me, period. Speak with a doctor and they will make sure you are on the best track for your personal needs. Consider this as general advice for health and fitness for a reasonable person. Gamer, Gamer edition. edition. Most of the footage you'll see in the background are clips that I grabbed from Ring Fit, so spoilers if you play that game for the story. <laughs> That's wild. You can totally just listen to this video. To get us started, I want to talk about fantastic foods and how to eat them. I always dislike the discourse around what we eat. It feels like people can be extremely dismissive about how diets work, generally drawing firm lines in the sand on things you can never consume. I think starting off the bat by telling people that they have to completely cut out sugar and processed food is a promising way to discourage someone from ever trying to improve themselves. I was right there, daily diet of Mountain Dew and Red Bull, crushing cold pizza at my desk without a second thought. Having a teenager telling me that I should stop cold turkey and crash my diet with bell peppers isn't the most enticing offer. The key is getting a little better every day. For the longest time I didn't eat breakfast, usually just grabbing a coffee and letting that caffeine carry me to lunch. When I was looking for a change, I figured if I started off with a healthy meal, it wouldn't matter how off the rails the rest of the day went, I still had an early victory. Of course, I still wanted something easy that I could eat at my desk, so I started with a shake that was a mixture of a greens and a protein powder. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to mention brand names in this video, so if you want to know what foods I'm talking about, feel free to ask in the comment or just reach out to me on Discord. Over the next week, a beautiful thing happened. Somewhere in that combination of hundreds of vitamins and minerals, I started to feel much better. I had a little more energy that was consistent throughout the day. I could feel my mood was more stable, and overall, I physically felt more upbeat. It was this moment that something opened in me. I realized that this tiny change towards the healthier side raised my base standard for life. And if I could do that by just sipping two scoops of brown powder, how far can I take this? This led to me spending the next year changing my diet, and in this process I found a handful of meals that I recommend you give a try. Some of these dishes may sound good to you, some of them might sound gross. I cannot emphasize enough that experimentation is the ticket to finding what you need. So substitute, remove, whatever it takes to get that secret formioli. For breakfast, I use that same powder, but now it's a full on shake. I'll start with a cup of any kind of milk. I'm talking oat, nut, or from a cow. You add a little coconut milk, half a banana, a handful of spinach, a scoop of collagen, and a few ice cubes to seal the deal. 
I still have my coffee, but I slowly decrease the milk and sugar down to just a splash of milk to let those fats mellow it out. I figure you would optimally have it black, but I just ain't strong enough for that kind of life. Lunch is my favorite meal of the day, so not to loop a broken record, but nine times out of 10, I'm gonna have chicken, rice, and broccoli. You look on any bodybuilding site and you'll see why. Chicken breast is low in fat and high in protein, Rice is one of the cleanest carbs you can eat, and broccoli... Broccoli is the patron saint of vegetables. But it's also very easy to make this meal incredibly boring. Luckily, you're only limited by your creativity. There are so many ways you can change up this dish to fit dozens of styles. With summer coming in hot, I take the opportunity to hit the grill, seasoning my chicken with salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Steam the broccoli and finish it with a touch of butter and pepper, and I generally use white rice because the brown stuff takes an eternity to cook. If you still cook rice on a stovetop, invest the $20 and get a rice cooker. I thought I never needed one until I tried it. It's amazing how simple the whole process gets, and you'll be way more likely to eat rice once you have one. You can also season the chicken in a Greek spice mix and sub out for a salad, or marinate your breast in teriyaki and finish your rice in a pan for that fried feel. Don't even complicate it. Toss everything in a pot and put some taco seasoning in there. Almost every culture throughout history has their own take on this type of meal, and it's a blast to try out anything that interests you. I know some of you will think this sounds like a lot of work, and when you're first getting started, it will be a learning process. If you live by a super tight schedule, try and make double portions of these meals and save the other half. You won't believe how clutch pre-made burrito mix comes in handy after a long day of work. Just cook up some rice and dump it on top. Hell, you can just eat it cold with a spoon. Live your best life. As for dinner, I just try to keep it light. Sticking with a plant-based meal or something closer to a snack helps even out the rest of your evening and helps you get better sleep. Just to keep it real, you're definitely gonna want snacks. I really love low-fat Greek yogurt with granola on top. It's an easy way to hit that sweet tooth while still keeping on the healthier side. If you're more of a chips kind of person, I would try out rice cakes. They have that crunchy bite and you can dust off a truckload of them for the same number of calories. Above all else, just make sure to be consistent. You won't see the effects of a healthy change right off the bat, so listen to your body and make changes where you need to. Once you start to see progress, I recommend getting a calorie tracker. There's a big reason why I don't recommend getting this tracker before you get started. It's way too easy to doom scroll your caloric breakdown once you get started, and that can be really discouraging. When you have a day where you go over, you may feel like giving up or fall into the trap of under eating to try to keep your numbers clean. It's not a scoreboard. You will feel way worse if you don't give your engine the gas it needs. Same goes to all my ectomorphs. Don't try to immediately overload your body with protein in an effort to put on weight. Always, always, always consider this process as becoming 1% better than you were yesterday. The calorie tracker is just a tool to easily see where you can cut down on certain foods or where you might benefit from branching out to different meals to cover any blind spots. For me, I wasn't getting enough fat in my macros and I was lacking vitamin A in my micros, so I just added an occasional avocado and a handful of carrots throughout the week. I still have days where I go over my calorie goals, but you're always going to lose a few battles to win the war. Just make sure to appreciate any positive maneuvers you successfully pull off, and you'll be on your way. With the Strong Food Foundation, it's about time we talk about one of the biggest pitfalls of any diet. That being drinks. If you're anything like me, you can drink your maintenance calories before you hit lunchtime. I'm talking sodas, sports and energy drinks, beers, cocktails, milkshakes, no matter what time of day, one of these will sound enticing. Most of us consume caffeine through liquids, which is perfectly fine. I think caffeine in moderation is a great option to get into the zone physically and mentally. It's the way that you do it that matters. The occasional soda or Red Bull isn't going to tank your gains, but there are far better options. Black coffee basically has zero calories and comes with a handful of health benefits. I tend to prefer a cold brew this time of year for the mellow vibes. 
Most people don't think about tea when it comes to getting hyped up, but they actually pack a great amount of caffeine and come in dozens of different flavors. I recommend trying a yerba mate or black tea just to see if it resonates with you. I also love having a pre-workout, but the important part of taking that is actually working out afterwards. All of that energy should be expended in the exercise and not just taken for an energy boost. You should also definitely follow the dosage on the jar. There's also straight up powder packs. I haven't tried any of the gamer focused brands, but I'm sure they're fine. Mostly, I just want you to think about consuming caffeine deliberately and mindfully. You should never just sip on any beverage as your daily carry. You may be wondering why I draw that line so hard, but it's very simple. The only drink you should be sipping throughout the day is water. Most people don't get enough water and I totally understand why. It's super boring. You'd be kidding yourself if you think the flaccid tones of room temperature tap water could ever compare to a code red. That's why I recommend making water as interesting and convenient as possible. I personally have a 60 ounce tumbler that I load up with ice in the morning. That bad boy stays frosty all day and minimizes refills so I can keep doing whatever I have on the agenda. I have a few friends that just flat out don't like water, so I asked them what they normally do to try and circumvent that, and a few options came to mind. Getting the powdered versions of sports drinks and only adding a portion of the recommended amount, flavored seltzers kick that carbonation without taking in a full-on soda, or my favorite, which is adding sliced strawberries, bananas, cucumbers, ginger, really anything to give it a nice flavor. As for alcohol, I can't offer much help. I gave the drinks up a few years back as I didn't like how it was affecting me. Not to say that you should completely give up the grog. Just remember all things in moderation. Throw a glass of water in the mix and keep an eye on your habits. Nothing like a night out with the crew to turn a relatively nutritious day into a late night Taco Bell binge. And on that, let's talk about the unhealthier stuff. I think it's critical to know that you can still have basically anything you want. You catch me on the right day and I'll be hitting the fast food, tearing up ice cream, putting away pizza, and I wouldn't have it any other way. When you see those athletes and influencers, remember that a great deal of this physique is unbridled dedication to a hardcore diet mixed with unbelievable genetics. If you try and drop everything to jump into an unreasonable routine, you are going to crash and burn. More than the diet itself, try your hardest to not fall into that spiral of envy. I want you to aspire to look and feel exactly as you want to, but you should never compare your personal journey to the lives of strangers on the internet. So leave yourself some wiggle room to enjoy all the great things in life. Have a meal that's out of your macros. Enjoy easy, restful days. Never regret time well spent. And make sure you just jump back on the bandwagon. To finish this out, I want to talk about what a successful day looks like in my routine. You can fill in the intensity and strictness of your own personal comfort level. Try to wake up with plenty of time before your obligations kick in. It can be tempting to set your alarm five minutes before you gotta be in your car, but these first few moments are some of the most critical for your day. Don't loiter in your bed. Get up and start moving at that first alarm. I make it a rule that I can't look at my phone until I make my sheets, which generally has me ready to roll. Drink some water. You are super dehydrated and it's what you need. Bonus points if you can add some salt or lemon juice, but I get that that can be a little gnarly. After that, this is the perfect time to go for a walk or a run if you can. There's no better mental armor than getting active early in the day. Even if you don't get the cardio in, make sure to eat breakfast before you have any caffeine. I like to wait at least an hour after waking before I get any coffee in me. From here, everyone's day will split into different directions, but the basic advice I can give you is do the difficult stuff early. You know what I'm talking about. That thing you need to do that was the first thought in your head when you woke up? Get it done first to get it off your mental. 10 a.m. to noon is your best window for working out, but even if you get started at midnight, that's better than doing nothing at all. Make sure to keep your sessions reasonable. Anything over four days a week might push you into overtraining. Eat lunch at a proper time. It's very easy to put off breaks when you're in the zone, but the longer you go without those moments to reset, the harder the rest of your day will be. 
If you can, take a five minute break for every hour you work. Just getting up from your chair and stretching can do wonders. Bonus points if you get some sun on your skin. When you are done with work, actually be done with work. If you keep dwelling on everything going on, you aren't going to relax. Take a moment, close your eyes, count out 10 slow breaths, and welcome yourself back to the present moment. When you eat dinner, try to leave a four hour window between the meal and when you plan on sleeping. You might have a snack in between, but that's just life. When it is time to sleep, do everything you can to get eight hours in. Sleep might just be the most important thing we do in our lives and it's the easiest thing to bargain down to nothing. If you're like me, then you think staying up late and working on a project will help you, but that could not be further from the truth. Take that time to get some rest and come back at whatever you're working on with fresh eyes. It's always the better option. Try to sleep in complete darkness with fresh, cool air. I usually listen to something in the background, which might not be the best, but it always has me out like a light. And that's it. Even if you only accomplish one of these goals, make sure to recognize a success and be proud of yourself and your improvement. It's easy to gloss over the little things, but they all add up to the person you want to be. That's all that I want to talk about today. I truly hope some of this advice helps you, and if you do anything that I didn't go over in this video, please post it in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for new things to try. No one routine is going to fit everybody's lifestyle, so always be open to change and make sure to enjoy yourself along the way. You already know, I want to give a huge shout out to Brumna, Lee, Post Mesmeric, Thomas, Seth Peacock, and Vindelin for their support on Patreon. If you would also like to support the channel, consider joining the Patreon, becoming a member on YouTube itself, or just joining the Discord. I know this video is a little out of left field, I'm still working on that big project, and this is a topic I've wanted to talk about for a long time. It's just a little tricky actually getting across things that I think will actually help people without it coming across as flexing or thinking that you know better. I certainly don't, so I don't know how this will be received, but if you are interested, I have a follow-up video that I would love to do about exercising, how to get started, and some of the best opportunities and options to actually do so, so please let me know in the comments if you would like to see that. Normal videos aren't going anywhere, it's just always worth branching out, you know? Big video should be out next week. I know, famous last words, but progress is coming along very smoothly. I'm actually done capturing, so it's just time to bind it all together. Outside that, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.